Hello, you're very welcome along to another episode of the Talking Sport Podcast, and it's Daniel here, joined once again by my brother, Sean. How's it going? Not too bad, Sean. And listen, for those watching on YouTube, and um, we've got a lot of new subscribers recently, really appreciate it. Um, all we ask is if you do like the video on YouTube, it just helps us reach more people, and we'd really appreciate it. Uh, Sean, we're going to talk about football. We're getting a lot of abuse for kind of neglecting football over the last few weeks with um, Cheltenham on and that sort of thing, but... We've got a lot of talk about here with Stephen Kenny's Ireland team and last night's defeat to Serbia. What were your thoughts on the overall in the performance? Yeah, I thought it was a, a decent performance. Um, but obviously, you know, we, we've had worse performances and got better results. Um, but I definitely think, look, there's things to work on. Um, he's starting. I know even with injuries and, and suspension, not suspensions, but uh, injuries and, and people just not being around, I, I think... I think he started to find a bit of a team there. I think he's found players that are going to work for him. Um, it'd be interesting to see. Where, I think he'll go back to a four against um, uh, Luxembourg. If he doesn't, it'll probably be because of the personnel he has and he just, you know, he doesn't have players in, in specific positions. You know, notably players who can play on right wing or left wing. Um, so, so I definitely think there is is a pro process in there. I, I you know, I just think fans, you know, people that are hammering Stephen Kenny are probably the same people who hammered Martin O'Neill towards the end of, especially Martin O'Neill. Um, and obviously probably love Big Big Mick because he got us to a World Cup in, in 2002. But there definitely just is is something at the minute where the squad is clearly in transition and it's very sort of unique at international level when you have that. But, you know, there is examples of teams who've gone through, through sort of transitions. Um, I think England probably went through it in, in 2014-16 when the you know the some of their senior players, you know, your know, Wayne Rooney's, Ashley Cole, guys like that who'd moved on and they were able to bring in this this new type of player. Um I think Scotland have done that over the last three or four years. And you can look at them with, with the players they have and the quality they have compared to us. So, you know, I don't think Ireland have a divine right to qualify for any tournament. Um, but you do expect Ireland to be there or thereabouts in the playoffs. I still think you know, we can, you know, we're going to need to probably get a result somewhere on the line because of, you know, it's a five-team group. Um, it's really disappointing to lose like that. Um, and it's probably just the timing of everything again. I mean, to, to miss two of your first-choice goalkeepers um, is sort of crazy, really. And then to miss Kieran Westwood um, because he's obviously not been training and not been playing. He's not fully fit for Sheffield Wednesday. And obviously they need him there in relegation um position so it's just it kind of is a bit bit harsh on Kenny but I still think that was a bit of a missed opportunity I mean you know God knows what fans are going to be in games going forward but to go to to Serbia to that stadium in Belgrade you know it's a cauldron of noise normally and, and it's a really tough place to go and I still think we kind of missed the trick there and, and probably a bit unlucky in terms of probably one or two players away from you know getting something from that game but yeah I still think that there's positives like there's a lot of things that you know, sloppy mistakes, but I definitely think the players <clears throat> played better than they have been doing, and they took a bit of onus on the chin. And, and I definitely think the you know, having Seamus Coleman back on that side, I mean, I thought he was brilliant, absolutely brilliant again. Probably goes unnoticed because he was a, a right center half in the tree, but I thought he was excellent. You know, made a couple of big tackles, took the ball really well. You know, I don't think he made too many long passes. You know, they were all kind of little one touches around the corner to, to Cullen. And dirty, but you know, ultimately you lose a game. Um, but definitely is positive. Look, and you know, people are up in arms about you know Ireland being in a transition period, but you know, probably it's not probably not the worst time to be in. I mean, a World Cup in Qatar. I mean, Jesus, it'd be Ireland's luck to qualify into Qatar, and geez, I'd say there'd be no one going. And if it is, well, well, just ju down. just on that, they're looking at a few people looking at boycotting it now, or am I just seeing? Yeah, yeah. Was, it seems like gathered pace, obviously. With, um, no, but it's just it's uh yeah it's probably not the worst time to do it. I mean I don't, I, I wouldn't be going to Qatar. Um, we'll we'll we'll, we'll boycott it anyway then, will we? Before yeah, we don't well, qualify. Yeah, I think Ireland really. should, but <laughs> but definitely definitely positives to take. Um, and you know it was Stephen Kenny's in a better well I don't know, but I think he, he's probably in a better frame of mind this morning mm -hmm. than he was yesterday. Just interesting you said the formation. I thought because it works so well, and I understand we're playing against. Uh, Luxembourg next but I do think that he would potentially stick with that 3-5-2 but you reckon that 
he'll go back to his back four if the personnel are available. And when you say if the personnel are available, who needs to be available that wasn't available on uh, last night? Well, it'd be interesting to see. I thought Kieran Clark was was pretty poor. Um, and I think, again, it comes from that when you've been playing with a club who've been struggling, you know, I don't think he exude, exuded any confidence. He also hasn't played a lot for Ireland recently. I, I have always thought he's been a good player for Ireland. Um, you know, it, it was difficult because when I saw Dar O'Shea in the centre of a three, I was a little bit like, you know, you kind of need a little bit more experience to play there. I mean, you you know, it's a, it's a refined role. I mean, you, you take... You know, John Egan plays that role incredibly well for, for Sheffield United and he just reads the game so well. And uh, Connor Cody at Wolves, for example. you know, or Harry Maguire when he was doing anything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You just you just kind of need a little bit more experience there. So I, I was surprised, you know, naturally it made sense with Duffy not playing that Coleman came in and O'Shea had to play in the middle. You know, I didn't think Clark was great. Um, you know, I, I think if... I'm not sure what Connolly see. If, if Connolly's fit and Robinson's fit, then I think he could play 4-4-3 and maybe play James Collins up there. Um, or Shane 4-3-3, four, three, four, three, three, you mean? Yeah, 4-3-3, three, three, sorry. Um, with, a, with a set striker, um, two off the wing, and then uh, three in midfield. Uh, and I think if, if they're off fit, I think he'll want a, he'll want a number nine up there. Um, but if they're not... Um, or say if Connolly maybe isn't fit and he doesn't want to start Robinson, then I think he'll play five to back. But I think he'll want James Collins or a Shane Long up there as a number nine as a goal scorer. So I think therefore he'll play, um, he'll play four, um, and play a four three three and go back to what he is. But I, I don't know. Maybe he might persist with the five to back. I, I didn't. I think it worked well. I didn't. Brian Kerr, he... Brian Kerr, and Damien Dane seem to be the only ones that didn't think. It worked. Yeah. I don't know if you saw that. And it just felt like they were probably just watching the Portugal game. I don't know. I personally felt yeah. that it worked really well. But Damien Delaney, it was a bit interesting when he was saying, you know, not a, everyone plays five to the back with their club, but they play in different systems. The, the essence of a five to the back is simple. It's three when you have the ball to create options, your wing backs get forward, and it's five when you don't have the ball, so you set into a shape. And whether you play a five four one or a five two three or five three two, the essence of it is a, is pretty simple and mm. you saw that when Ireland didn't have the ball it was very much a five and it was a good shape and I thought it worked pretty well and we probably just got undone by you know a couple of bits of quality from Tadic you know which is going to happen at, at international level I mean you know we're going to be coming up against Fernandez, you know um, uh, Bernardo Silva Ronaldo and you know next next count or next uh, round of game so you know it's going to have to happen but I, I, you know, I did think the five at the back worked pretty well. I mean, it got Coleman into the side who who needed to play. Um, it got Darty in. Who it, the, the big strength of the five at the back is is your wing backs. I mean, they're they're the linchpin of the side really, and they're so important. You look at what Chelsea are doing now, and um, they're incredibly important. And I didn't think we got anything out of our our wing backs really and the one time a couple of times Stevens got forward we looked really dangerous on that left side we obviously got the goal from Stevens joining the attack with a couple of chances in the second half on that left side um, and we probably didn't get the same with on the right hand side with with Connolly and Darty. I was really disappointed in, in Aaron Connolly um, I don't know whether he just needs a goal at international level or he needs a kick up the backside, but um You've been saying you've been. You, I don't know. You've been a massive fan of him for a while, like because he obviously has the talent. And at times, mm. I did think, right, he's now going to kick on here and play really well. And probably agree with Jules. He didn't quite live up to expectations. I just don't think he's a great footballing IQ yet. And I think, I you know, I think I said it before, but I think he could have gone on loan this year. You know, in hindsight, yeah. But you know, when you sign well back. And Mope, you know, I don't think you're going to start Conley and you've got Trossard who's in the Belgium side and, and you've been a revelation for Brighton. Then you bring in Lalana. So, you know, Conley was never always going to play every week and I think he needs to play every week. I think he needs to, you know, if he was at a, you know, a Swansea this year or, a, you know, a Watford or something, you know, probably won't get in the Watford side. But just just playing and learning when to time the run. So there's a couple of times he just, you know, he t went too early with the run and, you know, the ball didn't break for him or, you know, he was just like a second behind the game. And when you're a second behind the game at international level, you're miles off it. And uh, there was just a couple of times where he could have been one-on-one. -on -one. I must say, I thought Robinson was brilliant and thought it was, you know, a real, 
not coming of age because he's 26, but I thought it was a real time. You're like, yeah, well, he's he's definitely one of our starters. Um, and Conley, you know, there's still loads more to come from him. He's still incredibly young. Uh, hasn't played enough, I don't think, at at a, at a good level. Um, and I think a lot, like he has to, you have to play games. You know, Troy Paris playing games. Um, you know, Adam Ida isn't probably playing as many games as he'd want. You know, Norwich have been incredible this year. They've got uh, Pookie and and Jordan Hugo who are ahead of them. But you you need to play games to build up. You know, Aaron Connolly should be learning from Shane Long. Shane Long made a career off living off the the shoulder, the centre half, and that's what Connolly has to do. But he doesn't make the he doesn't make as many penetrating runs as he should. Um, so it's, I'm a little bit disappointed with him, but uh, I'm sure he'll start the, the next game because I don't think we've too many options. Um, thought Josh Cullen was really good in midfield. Thought the midfield too worked really well, considering how you know people like it's funny like people. People say, oh, Josh Cullen's young. I mean, he's 25. Um, he's inexperienced, yeah. But, I mean, this is like Stephen Kenny said before. Like, we're going to end up in a situation where John Egan's 28 and he's played a handful of games for his country. And he's been an amazing defender in the championship in the Premier League for four or five years. But because he was 24, 25, oh, he's still young. Do you know? And I think if you're, you're at that situation, you now at 25, you're, you're heading into your prime years. I mean, you're not young. You should be you should be experienced. You should be given game time. Um, and I thought Cullen was excellent. Um, thought we were pretty good in midfield. Played the ball forward. I was surprised Malumbi start just because he hasn't played a lot, and I think his fitness kind of showed in the, in, when he was come when he came off. Um, just on just on that, it's important to say I think a lot of people were surprised he got taken off. Do you think it was pure like he hasn't played enough football and Stephen Kenny thought, or do you think he could have potentially risked it? Because I know Jeff Hendricks struggled struggled in recent games and years. I think overall, I just don't think he he has it anymore. If he ever, if he ever did, I th- I think, but I think him coming on, it didn't exactly help the cause. Uh, albeit maybe it was the right decision if Malumbi was struggling with fitness. Yeah, I, that's when I thought Jason Knight would come on. Sort of like for like players, somebody get get around the pitch and mm-hmm. press high. I mean, the Tadic, what goal was it now? I think that, well, I think both goals in the second half kind of come from a little bit too much space in midfield because, you know, we haven't got around the ball and Cullen kind of gets turned. But, you know, Hendricks, you know, if you look at Malumbi, he's everywhere. And I think... He, that's the role he played for the Irish under 21s. Cullen kind of acts as a screen and Malumbi's everywhere pressing. I mean, there's a couple of times where he was over enthusiastic, made a couple of fouls, but you don't mind fouls like that. But Hendrick just didn't, didn't affect anything of the game, didn't press um, with any sort of exuberance. And I thought, to be honest, I thought Jason Knight would come on instead of Malumbi, a more like for like sub. Um, and I think he probably got a couple of the subs wrong. I think Malumbi was right to come off. You know, you don't want him getting an injury. He hasn't played enough. You know, that is a clear point. He hasn't played enough. And that's the problem with a lot of these players. You know, Stephen Kenny's dealing with guys who aren't match fit. You know, McLean came on, has been carrying a bit of a knock. Robbie Brady's not playing week in, week out. Um, kind of show with that, you know, that dead ball with the last couple of minutes when you're just crying out for a good delivery. Um, and I think it, I think ultimately it proves when you're not playing week in, week out when you play a game. Um, and... Yeah, very disappointed in Hendrick. You know, I thought it'd be a kick up the, the backside to come on. He just, he looked like he was coming to, you know, collect a cap. And, you know, I think is, he has is been. He, I, is, is he good enough anymore? Or, or I don't know. I, look, I think, I, I, think he, I think he is a good player. I think there's a good player in him. Um, I think when he was playing with Burnley, he was very, he was good for Ireland because he was playing with a bit more confidence. I just think he's at a club now where, especially this year, where he hasn't improved. He hasn't got better. He's not playing with any confidence. And, I think Hendricks won of them. I think if you were, you know, if you go, if you went back to a derby, you know, back to somewhere a club he loves or drops down a division to the championship, I think you could find a, a better player in there because, you know, there definitely is a footballer in there. Whether it's just confidence, um, you know, he, he just Hendrick in his when he was playing well in the Euros, he just and at Burn, he just looked strong. You know, you couldn't shake him off the ball. Now he just, now he just looks like a passenger. Of the game is he's very passive. The game kind of almost passed him by and I don't think you know at Burnley Sean Dyche would have allowed that so yeah t- like a lot of people are calling him for, to start I, I didn't want him to start based on club form and he didn't come off the bench showing anything and I think that was a mistake by Kenny I mean I think it it, it just made it made Ireland very passive um, and I think the worst thing for Ireland you know was probably scoring when we did because we were excellent and once we scored, we kind of sat back and went into 
the old shape and we were I wouldn't say killing them but we were they could I couldn't really get around the ball enough I don't think there was too many times where they turned it over Serbia you know I don't think they're a massively pressing side if you like I think they you know they weren't full of energy like that and we just kind of kind of went long and we stopped playing and second half again we stopped playing and when you do that you make a more of a a game with space when you're trying to counter attack more and you know play long and, and all of a sudden when you're playing long the team you, you've no shape to you um, because players some players are coming short for the ball and it's going over their head and then all the strikers are running 40 yards on and all of a sudden there's spaces in that middle of the pitch with 20-30 yards of space and that's where Tadic was getting on the ball causing us problems and it, it felt a bit demoralising when you saw obviously Ireland scored scored a second goal um, it was 3-2 and you just think oh, like if we got a point there it would have been a you know, it would have been a brilliant point. It's it's so big, isn't it? Especially in a five team group. Mm. And we've so many little opportunities. And while I agree, and to be honest, overall it was a very positive night. And I actually agree with you in terms of the subs he probably got wrong, but in terms of the team and the way we played at times, really, really good, really, really positive. But yeah, it's just frustrating because I know we're we're never really gonna qualify for the World Cup, but Jesus, if we got a point their way to mm. Serbia, it just sets us on the road with three points against Luxembourg. Like it's yeah, it's just frustrating, but I, I do think there was positives there. Um, we, yeah, we, we we mentioned the luck thing. I won't turn on on it too much. I mean to say, Kenny, Stephen Kenny, like, how can he? He's gone into a job with an incredible amount of injuries, COVID cases, uh, now players out of form at club. Although I think all, all Iron managers at times have had to play or had to yeah, manage no, players no, that haven't played. In fairness, yeah. Yeah, but I just think it's it's probably more the injuries and COVID depleted squad. Like I don't. I, I don't really remember anyone, any Ireland manager having to put a, a 21-year-old with very little game time this year in goal for, for their country. You know, whatever 21, about... 21 for a goalkeeper. Yeah, yeah and, and whatever about Kelleher playing. I mean, he's played in the Prem this year. He's played in the Champions League. He's had a top club um, with a brilliant goalkeeper. You know, Travers has had that. He's gone on loan and then he got caught, recalled. Uh, recalled. I hate that. I hate when a, a player gets recalled from loan. I think it's pretty selfish by a parent club. You know, obviously it had to be done with an injury, but yeah, just explain to people that don't quite keep up with maybe the championship what happened there just with Travers. Um, well, I think it was Begovic that picked up an injury for, for Bournemouth, and obviously Travers was third third keeper. Um, so they sent him out on loan to Swindon. I think he played one game. I think Conor Masterson or someone was on loan with him, and you know, it would have been good for him. Um, he played one or two games and he got recalled because of an injury at Bournemouth. So you know, when you when like you ask any player there, any player in the squad, anyone who's sitting on the bench, you know, wants to be playing game time. And you know, it would have been massive for Travers if he played, you know, seven or eight games for Swindon, albeit at League One, and he came into this Irish side a bit more full of confidence, and he could have nailed down a a place. But you know, obviously that's that's football, and he make decisions. Um, just on just on the goal, um, as a, a goalkeeper's union, I, I like he shouldn't have come out. That's goals they're saying. And he just gave someone like Mitrovic the chance to try an audacious chip. But I still think it's it's lost almost in the analysis that, yes, it was a mistake, but goalkeepers we've had. I know Randolph has probably made far worse mistakes for Ireland and not been punished by a goal. I just felt like it was just so cruel the way, yes, he stepped off his line. He got back. He was only maybe five yards from where he starting position would have been, I guess, by the time the chip happened. It was just that his momentum was so all over the place and he couldn't get back quick enough. But I think it's almost lost in the goal or the analysis I've watched on telly and on Twitter how amazing a chip it was from each other. Like, that's not an easy finish. Uh, it's not even e- an easy finish on FIFA, let alone in, in real life. Like. No, it, it's, it's international football. You know, you, you get punished more than, you know, League One Championship football. You, you know, he's extremely unlucky. Um, but, you know, we lose the ball. I think the, the worst thing for Kenny, when he looks back at it, we lost the ball and there were there were cheap goals to concede from Ireland. I mean, yeah, there was quality from Tadic, you know, he wasn't pressed. There wasn't players around him. The the third goal is incredibly poor from Kieran Clark for someone of his experience. He he should be jumping early and winning the foul there. I also think there was a there was there was a lot of elements of that. I mean, Serbia showed they had a bit more now, they had a bit more experience, winning free kicks, slowing the game down. Ireland was a bit more you know, we're playing, not playing, but we don't have that nasty. So, I mean, the, the equivalent I use is when our Irish teams go into Europe in the qualifiers, I mean, you check Twitter after a game, every every Dundalk or Rovers fan is 
calling the opposition cheats because they dive and they roll and they win penalties. But that's that's football. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna do it to Portugal. Are gonna do it to us with Pepe. You know, the greatest Barcelona and Real Madrid teams of all time. Pepe, Busquets, um, PK. You know, guys like this who do anything to win and they win fouls and it's not pretty, but at the end of the day, you, you win a free kick when you just might need it. And there was a couple of times where I thought of, you know, Ireland moved that body that little bit more, they'd win a free kick. Clark, you know, I just think if he jumps early and gets a nudge in the back, I think he wins that free kick, you know, seven or eight times out of ten. And it was just a couple of times I just thought if we had a bit more experience, not experience, probably more winning mentality, if, if you get me. You know, guys who won a lot in their career that just know what to do. I mean, I just think it was it's probably that. Um, it's probably what well, some teams lack and I think when you have it across the board I mean probably like you know England have it in Harry Kane Jordan Henderson they just they know how to use their body well to win a free kick or just release pressure at the right time or you know make sure the ref knows about a decision that's gone against them and just thought we are a little bit passive in that regard and it's, it's that that probably comes from I know maybe the players lacking the experience but I guess Stephen Kenny maybe needs to be a little bit more Mm. rootless it's almost like we're too nice to play against and now teams might look forward to it going okay these I actually did think that when it was a bit end to end uh, it might have been one all actually I think it might have been one all but maybe maybe it was 2-1 Serbia and I remember we had a chance and then Serbia had a chance I just remember thinking the Serbia loved this like they love this because mm. they, they'll fancy themselves to, was, to each yeah. chances we're not great and even a couple of times there were chances to take a, a Serbia lot out and we're like I oh, will leave that yeah mm. yeah no I agree that like there wasn't too many tackles in anger I don't think any Irish player got a yellow I mean, in a qualification yeah. campaign, I understand that, yeah, two yellow, you'd only get two yellows because um, you'd miss a game. And that's fair enough. But you could still get around the pitch a little bit more. But I'd be more disappointed at times. There was a couple of opportunities where, especially in the second half, we had a chance to to play a ball, to, to slide a ball in for someone, to, to just create a little bit of opening, whether it be Stevens, Robinson, and they just couldn't get that pass right. And it's just... You know, if you get that pass right, that's it. You have an opening. If you don't, you you, you know, you've committed three or four players forward. And I just think that's what I was a little bit disappointed in at times. It was just that final pass, just that, you know, Conley had a Robinson, Steve, just that touch of composure. Um, and we didn't have it. But, I mean, that's the, that's where we are. But, no, I definitely think that, look, there is things to improve on. Um, you know, I, I don't necessarily think... You know, there's a couple of poor performances by the Irish guys in there, but the question marks that were around some players, I thought a few of them answered it. Um, Josh Cullen, I thought, yeah, I thought he answered that. Alan Brown, as sort of our box to box midfielder, thought he was very good, and I think that performance has kind of been coming from him. Just signed a just signed a new deal with Preston after a lot yeah. of um, clubs were after him. A lot of bigger clubs were after him. Yeah, and I think it'd be interesting to see because obviously they just sacked Alex Neil, who's been there for a while who's been very stable so it'll be interesting to see what happens to them but definitely thought he was good thought Callum Robinson was excellent um, there's, there's still more to come from these players though and that's that's the crucial thing like Callum Robinson was excellent based on what he's done for Ireland in the past um, uh, you know I think there's more to come from Conley we are just crying out for a a number nine someone who'll just finish and I know we can all we can say that but we just have to find a, a system you know I, I watched James Collins quite a few times this year and every time you watch him you think well he, he gets stuck into the game he's in the game he's centre halves know they're in a battle with James Collins they know they're playing against a James Collins and there's nothing worse than walking off a football pitch and the centre back has you know no muck on his shorts and no muck on his his legs I just think James Collins has to start against Luxembourg. Um, I think he will start. I think he did enough when he came on. But he's the kind of player who can bring other players into the game. He's very good at pinning a defender and using and kind of creating that uncertainty and sort of slipping the ball through where, you know, you're taking one or two guys out of the game. So, you know, that's the kind of team I'd like to see for, for the back. Um, Cullen back in midfield. Malumbi back in midfield, Brown. I think we found some sort of midfield that you can base it on. Now that you got Josh Cullen in there, um, and I still think there's more to come from him. Uh, I think Coleman will start because he he has to. Thought he was very good. Um, thought that Darrow Shea was pretty good. Um, it's one of them when you're a young defender, 
you need you can never have two young defenders. I mean, Jamie Carragher always says this: you can never have two young defenders, and you can never really have two old defenders playing together. You kind of need one or the other, and you need each other to bail each other out. And I just a couple of times there, you know, one or the other didn't bail each other out, if you know what I mean. And they just now that comes from, and you know, it's the first time playing together. You know, and they're playing in a tree as well, which is a little bit different. And I can understand where Damian Delaney was coming from with that as a defensive unit. Um, and I think that role in the middle of the tree, and I don't think it's a role Dara would have played for West Brom. He has played in the tree, but he's played on the left of a tree and he's played on the right of a tree. And in the wing back probably is. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah, and the middle of the middle of the tree at the back is is an incredibly just, important position. Just, and just think, on that, yeah, go on, sir. I, I'm not sure. Like people would say, Duffy. I'm not sure Duffy would have played because I don't think he really has the pace. But I think God, if we John Egan in there, you know, you have a back tree of Egan, Coleman. You know, probably O'Shea over Clark. I mean, that's that's a lot more solid. And these are things. I mean, when you're missing your your top centre half, you're missing your top goalkeeper. Your defensive st- or top two goalkeepers. Your defensive stability is completely gone. It's destroyed, and it probably showed a little bit. Um, but you know, I was there was you could take a lot more things out of that. Yeah, I know. What I would say is. You know, growing up when you were watching Ireland, like it was renowned that Ireland was long ball and it was kind of flick ons. I mean, that you were, you everyone knew that, you know, growing up. I mean, make no mistake, you know, there was that the Richie Dunn in Russia where he's got the bandage, he's got it's that blood and stuff. That's amazing. And I still think, you know, you can have a bit of that. But I think there'll be kids growing up that will know Ireland from trying to play a bit more. And I think ultimately we'll know when six to eight months in the next couple of games, whether it, it actually works. But I still think, you know, there'll be kids, there'll be more parents going, like watching the men's side going, this is how you play football. And there'll be more coaches up and down the country will be going, keep the ball on the ground, play. I think it's more of a, a cultural thing. Um, it just needs to work. It just needs to win games. And you now, I mean, if we beat Luxembourg, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't write, wouldn't hold me breath. It's same, yeah. Yeah, considering we all I'll be, I'll be watching that I, I kind of enjoyed the Serbia away game but I'll be watching the Luxembourg game like that like, yeah you know, it's the, if, that, if that makes sense I look forward to the big games almost yeah it's Saturday night as well which is one of them where you know could really ruin the whole evening but I definitely yeah I, you know we started the day Irish football started the day in a worse position it like you know I saw I, I, you know obviously you know, I, I, you know I know support's got them but you like them to do pretty well and it's great that they got to the Euros but you look at their squad, we can, Ireland can't produce an Andy Robertson. Like Andy Robertson got rejected at Celtic. He went to Queens and then went to Dundee um, and just found a way through the Scottish footballing system. Like no one in Ireland can do that. You can't come home, really go from a, a Liverpool, a United, uh, a Blackburn Academy or whatever it is, come back to Ireland, play through the league and at 22, 23, go to it just it just doesn't happen. It's an outlier. It really is an outlier. You look at Harry Wilson at Wales. I mean, he's from I think pretty sure he's from Wrexham. He played for Liverpool as a kid. You know, it's 30, 40 minutes from Wrexham to Liverpool. Um so it's just one of them. We just don't have we don't produce we can't produce players through the current system. We rely so much on on the English system. Um and ultimately it holds it back when you're trying to when you're trying to produce you know, aside um, of players yeah. on the pitch. Um, and, like, that's that's not Kenny's decision, fault. It's, it's decades of negligence from the FBI kind of catching up on Ireland because we've it's been proven in the last couple of years you can't just rely on, you know, the English football system um, because, you know, the competition's increased from, you know, they're signing players from Spain at younger ages, signing players from, you know, Africa at younger ages into academy. So Irish players aren't really getting a look in. Um, but we also can't rely on, you know, your Patrick Bamfords, your James Madison's, your Mark Nobles, Harry Kane's guys, Rain Rooney's that are Irish qualified that could play for James, Ireland. James Madison's Irish qualified. Yeah, James Madison. Oh. Yeah. Madison, Noble, Kane, 
uh, Wayne Kenya, Rooney, for Rice, the Grealish. He's have a good. Well, the Rice and Grealish, like obviously, yeah. you said negligence and long term FAI. That was negligence. Someone just saying mm. not seeing that potential problem. I know we shouldn't get players that don't want to play for us. However, um, you can always. There's always exceptions to the rules. A couple of points. I just want. I, we kind of covered the back three. I know. I don't know if you watched Kevin Doyle. I thought he was very interested saying. Everyone at a club loves a back three. So the strikers get two up front, five, three, two. The midfielders can get up and down more. The the wing backs love it. They can get forward. He goes, it's the centre backs that are always like, oh, because it's just they played in the back two mm. all the way up. But I think we kind of covered that. I thought Kevin, was, he was very good on that point. And I actually think he's grown. I thought him and Richie were really good. Um, level heads, I think. I think they called it well. They weren't like Kenny fanboys yeah. either, you know. Um, but they were really kind of called as I saw, saw and I thought two of them are very very good with Darren Maloney as well but I like about Kevin Doyle is he's actually he's played with a lot of those players you know which is yeah longer he, he actually said yeah just just yeah, sorry it he didn't really said, come like, across yeah. yeah he said oh, it, yeah, he, he, the only time he did he's like look at Long he's 30 for whatever he's 34 yeah, longer, yeah, yeah running, running in the 19th minute I was like he's only on 10 minutes but, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it is but you, you, sometimes that comes across and obviously Kevin Doyle and Shane Long best of mates from, mm, from yeah, yeah. Uh, Reading but didn't really come across. Sometimes you can listen to a player, and it's, you know, they say they say nothing because they know the the, the player's playing. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I think that 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 an, uh, analysis from them was pretty accurate. It's uh, it's not perfect the Kenny era, but if there's any person we should give time, if there's anyone who's done more to promote, I don't think there's a person who's done more to promote Irish football and the League of Ireland in the last 10, 12 years. I mean, people. You know, League of Ireland always had its core fans. I mean, you know, that's understandable. But I think it the reach has grown. Um, you know, in places like Dundalk and Dundalk, um, Cork City again, because of people like Stephen Kenny that have put time, effort into the League of Ireland, who've grown the game, who've qualified for Europe, so Dundalk are better facilities, you know, more people going to the games. You know, so I think if there's any person who deserves time, it's it's Stephen Kenny and you know, hopefully we give it to him. Um, mm. and uh, okay, I think it's it's not a bad time to be in transition because he inherited a bit of a mess from Mick McCarthy um, and Mick McCarthy inherited a massive mess from Martin O'Neill and when you have messes you know you need someone to take time and clean it up and I just think you know the, I think with Martin O'Neill and you know not really with Mick but we lost a generation of players in terms of your John Egan your Matt Doherty's your Hurahan's your um Ender Stevens. Well uh, Ender was probably a bit of a late later bloomer in football anyway, but we missed, you know, that ge- kind of generation where, you know, international football is like basically two or three year cycles. So you've you've different, you know, when you're 22, 23, you've you're young because 21s is obviously you know very rare for an 18, 19 year old to get in the squad. Now we have a couple, but it's like 21 to 24, 24 to 27. And you know, 27 to 30, and that's where we need to get as many players in the 24 to 27 bracket, which we have done. You know, with Brown, with uh, Robinson, I think 26, with Cullen. So they play for three or four years, and you have a longevity. We just didn't have that under Martin O'Neill. I mean, we were playing guys that were 32, 33 the whole time that we were kind of relying on them. You know, your Daryl Murphys, your David Milers, and um, not that you should be taking caps away from them, but you need to be having a you know, a Cullen in there, a Brown in there, like, like you look, your heart back to it. John Egan hasn't played enough for his country. And um, how many caps? If you don't know, I'll look it up. While I'm gonna, really talk, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna guess. Have a guess. Uh, I guess eighteen. Eighteen. Probably, oh. probably fifteen. Yeah, he, uh, he captained the he captained Ireland against about, Bulgaria yeah. in like his third cap. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess. Oh my god, eight 12, caps. It says here eight caps. There yeah, that's go. the F- FAI website, so you know what that's like. But yeah, I should get a different, better source. But yeah, Check, eight, uh, it's great. Yeah. Even there, like I'm actually checking another source instead of transfer market. But that's but that's what it is, and that's just uh, that's what that's what Irish football has gone through when he should have been playing instead of you know Richie Kyo or you know Kieran Clark. Not that these twelve, guys 12 were, caps. There yeah. you go. So the FAI website is not eight, even eight, updating probably itself. Eight, What's eight, going on there? Like you mean probably eight ca- competitive caps. I'd say. That could be it. Uh, now six and six, so no, yeah, no excuses there. there. So yeah, but yeah, so, that's uh, twelve. Yeah. But you know, John Egan played twelve, and he's been a you know Jesus. a brilliant player. Yeah. And he was a, well, he just just for those because like 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 myself, I'm very Premier League orientated, and I guess a lot of the listenership, um, I'd like to think they know a bit more than me now on the on the championship. Now I I do watch a lot when when we were watching it together and stuff. But how long has John Egan been good enough to 
to play for Ireland just because you know just a bit of balance here and last thing now before we finish up because I have one more thing to talk about um, how good has he been good enough to pl- play for Ireland if you know what I mean because it's easy to say oh he should be playing for five or six years mm-hmm. when was he good enough to play ahead of say Duffy was always going to be in there so yeah. uh, another well he, he signed to Sheffield United in the January of 2018 I'm pretty sure um, or, yeah it would check, be, check yeah. here you work away and uh even before that at Brentford, I mean, he was he was captain at Brentford um, at a really young age. He's always had the the right kind of mentality and personality to play. You know, at that age, you should be ring fencing him and saying, right, he's going to play, you know, 30, 40 times and he's going to play really well for the next couple of years. And we're going to kind of build this next defence around him because Duffy's a couple of years, you know, I think Duffy maybe a year, year or two older than him. But that's a partnership. And instead, we just didn't really have that. He wasn't really in the squad um, to play. And like what he's done, obviously, in the last couple of years, he's taken his game to the next level. Um, he played in a three at the back. So I understand at times maybe why, Man- why Martin O'Neill didn't play him because he's playing in a three and Martin O'Neill very much a four. Uh, what's Martin O'Neill? Four, four, three. <laughs> I think he's <laughs> making up as a go along, Sean. Yeah. Brady. But uh, that's a bit harsh on Martin. No, it's harsh, it's harsh, yeah. Take it. It's but harsh, uh, but possibly fair in, recent, in the last couple of years. So I just think, like, I just think he could have been playing. And I think now it's, you know, I'd, I'd rather see Dar O'Shea in there or Jason Malumbi in there than a, a Jeff Hendrick or a, a Karen Clark because it's insanity is, you know, trying to repeat things and mm-hmm. expecting different results. And, you know, like people, like, you know, one of the lads was saying to me, you know, Robbie Brady's such a talented player, you know, one of our most talented players. I mean, he, he just like the, the corners. I mean, you're in the 80 odd minute, you've a chance to score, just put it in, even if you go long with it. So it's, it's a, you know, you, you want him to get a second contact on the ball. So it goes long that the first header gets hit back towards goal and anything can happen. I mean, when you, when you, when you can't really beat the first man, you're very rarely going to score. I mean, I think it was, was it O'Shea had to duck really to get under? Yeah, and that was half a chance, away. I guess. But yeah, yeah O'Shea was one. And you can't, you can't really score from that kind of flick on. You want to at the near post. You want pace on the ball and a good height for a flick on. You don't want to be down here trying to flick it. That's what Dara was doing. He was like, yeah, yeah, but I just, you know, even if you have to go long with the ball into the box to get a second con, like it's better than not hitting the first man and. Mm. I just it was poor. Him, him and McLean. McLean had a couple poor. as well. Yeah. Now I felt sorry for McLean because he's, he's back difficult. from injury. Yeah. yeah, it's difficult to come on as well into a game, yeah. and that's. I, but and, it's bad when I'm kind of going McLean. Just give it to Stevens, will you? Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. you can't, you can't cross it tonight. It's just not working. But um, look, look, look lasting shot. You go on, go on, finish off. It's just, point. Uh, we didn't lose the game because of that. But no, it's just small things. Like, I mean, they brought on I think sixty million. Your man. Um, what's his name Jok- or Jok- Jovic from uh, Real Madrid who was at Frankfurt when he got to the Europa semi-final like very good player hasn't hit the heights of Real Madrid mm. but I mean to bring him Mitrovic on that striker they have Valovic he looks a player Tadic I mean this is what you're dealing with and you know the reason we like, hard back to it the reason we don't have the players we've no system, we don't have an adequate system to fall back on in the, in the League of Ireland mm. and a lot like you know, a few of those, um, the like John McGinn again being developed at uh, at Hibs, um, we just don't really have that here, and we rely so much on England. And when you're in England academies, I mean, it's very easy to fall by the wayside, and it's very hard to get back up the the ladder. And I think you know, someone like John Egan, you know, had you know some of his younger days, and um, at Gillingham, a very good player for Gillingham, um, I think it would have been 23, 24 playing for them. But you're still like 23, 24, like. Some of the Scottish lads, are, you know, Scott McTominay's playing centre midfield for United, you know, and that's just uh, that's the difference. Yeah, Scotland have underachieved, when, judging yeah. by that, or maybe we've overachieved. But no, no, Scotland, Scotland haven't yeah, had yeah. A, a good manager for a few years. And you can argue know. they don't have one at the moment. I'm not 100 yeah. sure on that. But anyway, they got they qualified. I'm not sure. Uh, Aaron Connolly's penalty at one all. I can't believe um, that wasn't given initially. In fairness, the replays. I wasn't hundred percent sure. It had to be slowed down for me, but in real time, I was like, "That's a massive penalty." And I understand Seamus got away with one yeah. afterwards, but as Kevin Doyle made the point, sure, that doesn't matter. Yeah. That's given one all. We two one up, and we could possibly win the game. That's outrageous, and it was such a, you know, what what I thought was obvious penalty at the time, and don't want to spend too long on this, but it's just an important point to raise that obviously VAR wasn't being used and. I guess you, it's one of them. I think Michael Oliver was quoted in the papers as saying that if we get rid of fire, this is what's going to happen. People are going to start 
playing that there's no bar so this is like the a throwback to the old days i guess more yeah. so than being unlucky for ireland but geez it was a massive moment in the game because if we go to one up to be honest i could see us conceding maybe two all but it would have been a massive obviously a massive moment yeah obviously i thought it was a penalty initially and because i thought he'd come through the back one but i thought it's 100 percent. i think same I, as you yeah because it's because it's a ref and there's no var you have to you have to look at it from his angle and yeah. to be honest it looks like he gets the ball from his angle yeah he might go through the back one but the ball does go off at a bit of a pace and you probably don't mm. see that slowing down but it goes out for a corner it does look like he's got it yeah. um, even the even the replays initially I was I like, thought, I thought maybe, their penalty yeah, was yeah. A com- I thought it was but I thought it was a shoe and I thought it was just one of those penalties that was going to typify the Kenny era so far yeah. but I can see but I, I actually see why he didn't give it because while a David Louise and a, like this it's like yeah. ah but you should have got out of the way Coleman it does just, look like, like a man it does look like a man takes yeah. takes the option to go down as well yeah well and, and it, only on the replay pitch. Clark Clark is pulling off and just one thing on that I actually think I wouldn't have given it as a ref if I'm refereeing there because I'm like I've just seen him slip he had no idea what he was doing Coleman there do you mean he just well, got out of I, I know but it just when you when you're someone goes by you and you kind of try and get out of the way you shouldn't be there in the first place where I think Coleman he's just kind of slips nah, I can see why he wasn't given but I guess it should have been given but the pitch was in rag order, you know, absolute rag order, which didn't help, you know, even like it didn't help them because it took them a while to settle into the game because the pitch was really mm-hmm. bobbling around. Um, so I God oh. knows what God knows what state the Aviv is going to be in because of the because of the rugby we've had. Um, so Jesus, that's all we need now—a bad pitch on um, on Saturday. But look here, oh. let's just let's just beat Luxembourg, get three points yeah. on the board, and. Uh, then be a big game against Qatar then. Big game against Qatar, yeah, in uh, Austria, I think it is. Yeah, so, uh, because why not? Jesus, I watch a bit of Azerbaijan, look at tough, tough enough to crack. Yeah. Uh, they and, should uh, see the goal, they can see yeah, this. Yeah. Sloppy goal, yeah. But, God, like, I mean, you could have done with them taking a point off Portugal, but maybe not as well. Yeah. Another, another day with Portugal. Point. Another uh, bit of luck, Portugal draw nil all there. We beat Serbia 2 1 for the penalty. And yeah. Look at us now, top of the league. But anyway, uh, we'll do a review of some sort, Sean, anyway, and maybe look ahead to the big Qatar game next week, which we're all very excited about. That's it from Tackle Sport. Really appreciate you listening to us. We're, deli- we're delighted to cover a bit of football again, Sean Army. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you, you are, anyway. Yeah, I suppose. It's good to be back. It's good to be back. Um, we've got Premier League predictions come back next week. I have a list of a few people I want to ask. If you're listening, you're probably one of them. Um, Shane Sexton, he's been champion now for about six, seven weeks for default, although he still has maybe four or five wins in a row. So that's coming back next Thursday. We'll do a review of the, uh, the Stephen Kenny and Ireland's hopefully a little bit more positive on Monday for Monday show. We might record that Sunday evening. And yeah, all that's left to say is, okay, please catch us on at, at Sackland Sports social media. Sean will put up his team again and I'll row in behind it. So that's all left to, all to say is goodbye from Sean. Goodbye. Let's go out and have a great weekend. Enjoy the international football, especially Cameron at the Premier League. Thank you.